that pop. Good evening, we're live on Facebook. This is the Derby Debrief. It's after Cheltenham Town 1, Derby County 1 at Wadham Road. And after all the build-up, the expectation, the talk of Cheltenham's form and lack of wins and lack of goals this season, we sit here a deflated pair, don't we, Sean? We do, and, and we feel like we're leaving with the two points dropped because the opportunity was there. We talked about the context of the game before the match. Um, Cheltenham obviously not scored yet, not won in the, in the league, really struggling for form, a team on the knees and, and we didn't make the most of it. The first 45 minutes I thought was poor in terms of make the most of that opportunity. You're playing them at home, that the, the, the field defeated and they have done for a while so go on the front foot, be aggressive, move the ball quickly and I thought for the first 45 minutes we, we were quite lethargic and, and one paced. Um, second half was completely different but at that point they have something to hold on to and they, they have something to, they wasted time and, and they made it difficult for us but there was still more than enough opportunities um, over the course of the game to win it. So you feel like we're, we're leaving with, with um, two points dropped. And gifting them a goal, that, that thing that they then got to hold on to as well, doubly disappointing. Yeah, well, every goal you can look back at and reflect and say we should have done better. There was opportunities to, to clear the ball uh, with height and distance. We were switched off from a, a, a throw in. Um, Fauna drove in, in field and lost it in a really dangerous area and, and Street was completely marked in the box. So there's so many elements of that goal that were disappointing that could have been avoided. Um, but for me, it, was, it felt like there was a bit complacent in that first 45 minutes and we gave them something. We gave them a bit of belief. We could have been two down um, not long after that. So that woke us up a little bit. Nels obviously got the goal just before half-time. You think that would have changed everything because Cheltenham then would have been felt defeat, uh, deflated because they've conceded and Derby would have been back in the game. The second half, we were much better and more intent. I thought Max Bird was a huge difference, especially in the first 20, 25 minutes coming on the pitch to, to create opportunities playing forward. And he showed that class that maybe was lacked in the first 45 minutes. But on another day, you, you win and you win comfortably. And if you flip it, if the f performance in that second half was in the first half, I think you won the game comfortably. But um, yeah, we, we, I think we're leaving feeling disappointed, feeling like it was a missed opportunity. And ultimately, if you, you start slowly and, and don't make the most of those opportunities in the first 45 minutes, you can then find it that little bit harder. It was a little bit like Groundhog Day, because I think we were saying similar things a week ago after the Cambridge match. Let's hear what the head coach, Paul Warren, has to say he's been speaking to us after the match. Well, Paul, it finished 1-1 here at Cheltenham in the end. What are your immediate thoughts after that? Just obviously we let one slip. We had plenty of chances, plenty of opportunities in the final third. Plenty of goal mouth incident. It just didn't fall for us. And I can't, you know, there's certain things I can criticise. at The effort levels I can't, but... Um, you know, sometimes football's a bit cruel and it was today. I don't think anyone in the stadium would say that we weren't the better team, that we didn't create the most chances, that we weren't the ones trying to play. Um, and it's, you know, I'm not saying it's an easy place to come, but if you want to be successful, you have to come to these places and win. And our away form's been really good, but today we just didn't take our chances where midweek we did. And that, that is probably as simple as I can put it. I was going to say that, actually, that the fact that you went to Blackpool, you, you took your chances, that was... Ultimately, probably the, the difference out there. And when James Collins had that chance at the end, did you almost think this is the moment? Yeah, I did. In fairness, I thought we had a set piece about 92nd minute. I thought if there's football, God, um, we'd score off this. Um, only six minutes of injury time uh, absolutely blows my mind. I'm not criticising the opposition. They're entitled to slow the game down as much as they want. But I mean, ball in play today must have only been about 40 minutes. Um, and we were having some, uh, you know, really good joy. We start, you know, we obviously uh, corrected a couple of things at half time, um, encouraged them to move the ball quicker from the middle of the pitch out, and the wide men started the second half really well. And it just felt like the goal was going to come, the goal was going to come, the goal was going to come, and unfortunately it didn't. And you know, we're judged by goals, not by performances and effort levels. So it does feel like we leave here like dropping two points. 
In terms of the performance, then, what, what were your sort of overall thoughts on that? You mentioned about creating plenty of chances, but overall, with the display, were you reasonably happy? Um, yeah, reasonably happy. Like, 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 it's easy for me to come out here and say, oh, it's a disgrace, you know, we should be beating teams like this. We should be beating teams like this. I, I completely agree with that. But I just didn't think, if I'm crit- critiquing it in an emotional state, I didn't think we moved the ball quick enough first half. That is definitely uh, the case. I didn't think we moved the ball switch the ball quick enough and if you're going to switch it slowly you might as well not switch it because there's no benefit you get over there after three slow passes you're in the same boat as you were here so I didn't think we were um, um, quick enough with our passing from the middle of the pitch but generally speaking I thought we defended pretty well although um, we give away a goal but I thought like Nelson Cash were very good Um, and then second half I thought we significantly better and I just thought the goal was going to come Um, And then the longer the game goes on, you're thinking how to change it, how to put two up top again. So we had a bit more control with Birdie in the middle of the park. But then there was a couple of incidents where we got to a position across and we had no one in the box. So we then need two in the box and then you then lose a bit of control in the middle of the park. So, But generally I thought um, most of the lads played well, but obviously not well enough to win a game that uh, we were determined to win. So that's what's disappointing. I think I say it to you every time we score from a set play, but you see the value of set plays with Curtis Nelson getting that goal just before half-time. How key was that to make sure you didn't go in behind at the break? Yeah, well, I mean, it didn't really change my half-time team talk, you'd be surprised to know, but Colo done great, great save off Colo's header, and then fair play to Nelson, he's followed it in. and um, Yeah, and it's a pity it's the only goal we scored, because I thought our play deserved more than we got, um, but we got what we got. So you've got five points this week. How do you look back on the week? Because you're now six games unbeaten in all competitions. Yeah, yeah, a bit disappointed, obviously. I thought we were good against Cambridge, didn't win. And I can't say this all season, obviously. Um, Good against Blackpool, win. Good against uh, today, don't win. So it feels like it's four points dropped. Is that right? If I dropped more than that? No, four points from three games, isn't it? Sorry. Dropped four points, so that's hugely disappointing. Um, but I, I'm happy with the level of performances but we just have to beat teams when they're laying in front of us and at the moment we're just letting ourselves down a little bit But in terms of those performances and things like that are you encouraged though you're six unbeaten and you're starting to gently build a bit of momentum which is how it sort of was last year when you went on that phenomenal unbeaten run you had a few draws chucked in there and you, and you yeah. gained a bit of momentum yeah, no one wants a draw, do they? Away from home, a draw, a point is better than nothing, obviously. Uh, I'm, I'm well aware of that, but we, you get greedy, I suppose, but you, you expect three points, the dressing room expects three points, the fan base expects three points, and we've just come up short. Like if we were annihilated in this game and like we just hung on and we got a lucky point, I'd be like, oh my God, but that wasn't the case. We just didn't score, so... I'm pretty happy with the form, but I'm not happy with the points tally. We should have significantly more, but I do feel like we're going in the right direction. And today might be a, a you know, a livener for a few that, you know, we can't waste the first half um, to win a game. And that was what that's what disappoints me the most. We leave here today. I just felt like we wasted the first 45 minutes, uh, and against against you can't do that against anyone. Um, and we should have, you know, I asked them to. You know, go after them from the outset, and I just don't think we had enough energy in our play. So it's two weeks till we play again in the league. You've got Notts County in the FL Trophy on Tuesday night. How are you uh, approaching that one? I appreciate it's only not too long after the final yeah, whistle. No, it's fine, mate. I mean, I knew how I was approaching it prior to today's game, unless we got injuries. So I'll go as strong as I can. I want to win the game. You know, we don't play again then for another whatever it is, eleven days. So it's a good opportunity to to get game time in the lads. But I want to win. And, you know, winning becomes a habit. So, you know, the, as always, if the lads who play um, significantly impress, it gives them an opportunity to be picked for the next game. And that's just how, how it is. So, um, yeah, look forward to the game uh, and hopefully put a performance on and we, we take our chances. It will be a nicer evening. Paul Warren speaking to us after Cheltenham Town 1, Derby County 1. Read between the lines, interpret the body language. He's trying to put some positives on talking about the unbeaten run but you know you can't take away from that thing that he said four points lost over the two games yeah I, I think so um, I think you'll see it more as a whole over the last four to six weeks um, some of the progressions he's seeing um, some of the standards that have been set in especially away from home so 
in context, kind of as a whole, it's been good, and, and we still find ourselves in a really good position with a, a, few, a game on hand and a few of the play, uh, a few of the teams above us. So, uh, an overview of it is, it's we're still fine, we're still you know in a good place. But in terms of the context of the game and the opportunities and the chances created, we were the better team. There was no doubt about it. Um, we were the team that looked like they were going to win the game. Um, but that's what you'd expect with, with a Derby team that have won four out of five coming into this game away from home and a team that has really struggled to, to find any sort of form, and um, especially at home you know, this season. So it's disappointing because it should be more and it's disappointing because you didn't make the most of the first 45 minutes, just like we touched on there. It, it's, it took too long to get going. And, and I often think if, if you come out of the second half, the first minute or so, high intensity, pressing, forward passes, moving the ball quickly, if it's that obvious when you see it in the first two or three minutes in the second half, you, you reflect and know that the first 45 minutes isn't the standard that we set ourselves. So disappointing in some ways. There's lots of positives over the last few weeks, but we'll be coming away from this game knowing it should have been more. And Cheltenham Town, their fans cheered their goal like you would expect, like they'd reached the cup final, didn't they? But it was, it was hugely disappointing. Yeah, well, they've been waiting a long time and you can only imagine what it's like being a Cheltenham fan at the moment, being in the stands week in, week out, trying to cheer on a team that has is, is lost pretty much every game, that hasn't scored, that have um, felt deflated and, and really looking for something to cheer about. So it's no surprise that they made a, a fuss of it. And from their point of view, they, they won it in a good area, they pressed well. Um, Street found himself at the far post unmarked, it was a great ball back across goal. So from their position that they'll be delighted with it from ours extremely disappointed and it gave them something to hold on to and and that was the the kind of key when Nelson got the goal you knew that second half could be more open and, and you hoped and presumed that we would go on to win the game it wasn't to be but it, it doesn't mean there weren't opportunities to take all three points we're going to hear from Curtis Nelson shortly but he's on the score sheet first goal in a, a derby shirt so a memento of the game for him at least it is and, it, and he's been excellent um, I questioned maybe the first few weeks with, with some of the signings not performing at the best and he was one of them. A couple of mistakes um, led to goals for him, but he, he's a solid defender. He, he organises the, the team around him well. Um, I thought it was excellent again with Cash um, at the heart of centre-half. They didn't really give too many opportunities for Cheltenham and, and he deserves that, that goal. And, and, and for me, it was, it was definitely close for, for player of the match, I thought. Very consistent over the last four or six weeks, and, and the p partnership that we're seeing between them two is a really strong one in this division. And James Collins in the second half could potentially have had three goals. They weren't easy chances, were they? But he, he had chances. Well, they were all from the left hand side. So Bart's got the, the nod for player of the match, who was a. Um, I think over the last two or three weeks, he's, he's been a, a shining light in terms of his movement, his uh, chances to get in positive positions. I have and, and will continue to question maybe the little detail on the final pass or the shot or the cross. I thought in the second half those deliveries were much, much better and it gave Colo a couple of really good chances. The build and the movement for Colo's chance where the goalkeeper Southwood made a brilliant, brilliant um, save just in front of goal. He was fully expecting the back of the net to, to be rippling and it was a brilliant move. And on another day, Colo gets two or three goals. It's just as simple as that. And Lady Luck wasn't on our side. The goalkeeper made some good saves. But it always felt like we were chasing because of the first half performance. The second half was trying to get ourselves back you know, in front once again. And um, that didn't happen. But Colo, with, with you know, 30 seconds remaining, cuts inside, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Only a week or so ago, we were talking about 200 league goals. If there's anyone that... You wanted him that position, it's Collo, but it, it wasn't his day today. Well, let's head back to Cheltenham now and get more reaction from the dressing room. And we've been speaking to Derby's goal scorer, Curtis Nelson. Now, sir, draw today your thoughts on the performance. Uh, it was there in, in bits, second half especially. We, we, we kind of dominated and we, we probably could have, could have taken the, uh, the three points, which is ultimately what we, wanted, we needed to do. How's the mood in the dressing room after that? Um, I'd say disappointed and frustrated um, more than anything. Is the frustration more coming from the fact that you played so well and got the result on Tuesday night and weren't able to back it up today? Yeah, I just mentioned there to, to those the guys, um, it's the consistency. We, we're disappointed we can't find that consistency. Kind of taken one step forward, one step back at the moment. We've obviously we've taken a point, but I think that's a game where, and regardless of who you're playing, we need to be back going back-to-back wins.
I know it's not the consistency you want, but it is now six unbeaten in all competitions, which is something, and that's the positive to take from today, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. I guess, yeah, if we're keeping a, keep keep being unbeaten, we're going to know we know we're going to pick up a point, at least as a minimum, and every point matters in this league, and every league, doesn't matter what you do, how you do it, pick up a point, always go for the jugular and go for three, if possible. Point earned thanks to your goal today. How pleased are you to get off the mark in a Derby County shirt? Yeah, pleased, but again, ultimately, it's not won us anything or got us anything, but it, I guess it guess it got us a point but it's not about who scores it's about how many we score I guess in the end, at the end so yeah I know Paul Warren wants you to be a threat from set pieces collectively I guess that sort of shows what he's after isn't it following in from winning the first contact as well yeah yeah in in, in a way we have need to I think yeah we got the first contact keeper made a save second one so yeah I think it's a case of um, kind of being consistent with delivery and which we do have we have got great quality in the team and, and making sure that we hit our zones and, and yeah and score more Notts County come to who you sorry you go to Notts County on Tuesday night in the EFL Trophy, a win or a draw that would mean you've gone and beaten from international period to, to international period. How important is it to go out on a high? Uh, yeah, very important. It's um, massive, massive for us to go unbeaten. If we can do the same again between the next international break, well, if we get the next inter- international break uh, till what is it end of November or whatever it is, you take it like yeah, block at a time and just keep keep um, keep winning, keep pick, picking up points and, and yeah, stay unbeaten. You seem to be developing a really good bond with Aaron Cashin defensively. How pleased are you with that? Yeah, uh, Cash is brilliant. Um, he's a young lad. Obviously, he's um, bags of energy, bags of ability. He can. He's definitely got um, what it takes to play at a good level, high level. Um, it's just about making sure that he's consistent, as along with the team, like myself. And it, yeah, building a, a relationship between the two of us is, is, is key. So, as long as we can, um, I guess, do our job and. Everyone does their job in their different like kind of units throughout the team. That's the that's the um, the main aim for the for the team. Let's have a look at the results elsewhere. Remember that uh, game earlier: Oxford United two, Bristol Rovers one, Bolton Wanderers one, Carlisle United three. As we know, Charlton Athletic two, Blackpool two, Exeter City nil, Barnsley one. A uh, big defeat for Fleetwood Town at home against Wickham Wanderers by four goals to one. Leighton Orient 1, 2-1 against Reading. Peterborough United winning 2-0 against Lincoln City. And Portsmouth going really well this season, uh, beating Port Vale by two goals to nil. Shrewsbury Town 1, Northampton Town 0, Stevenage 1, Wigan 0. Burton play Cambridge on Monday. How has that affected the League One table then? Let's have a look at the top half of the table. Uh, Portsmouth, as we said, going really well. Oxford United second in the table with Barnsley, Peterborough, Stevenage and Bolton. It means now that Derby County have just dropped a position from where we were ahead of kickoff. Uh, but they do have, as uh, Sean has said, a game in hand on some of the teams above them. Derby in eighth now with 18 points, just two points below the playoff positions. Cheltenham Town, they have doubled their points tally. They're up to two now at the bottom of the table with Wigan, Reading and Fleetwood Town also in the relegation positions. And we do have another game. They come thick and fast, don't they, at this level, on Tuesday night. And we were just hearing there, obviously, Notts County it is in the Football League trophy before another break for the, the internationals. Yeah, it's an opportunity for, for some of the players to, to get some match time, to, to build on what's been a really productive four, five weeks of, of football. Um, and then that little respite for certain players and key players is, is going to be important to, to come back into the League One fixtures um, fully fit and flying. And... I suppose looking back at the game, it's, teams are going to go to Cheltenham this year and they're going to lose. And we're, they were just waiting for that first game to, to get a point. And I think the whole context of the game is why everyone's disappointed. But ultimately, you've got a point on the road, unbeaten in, what, 6-7 now. Um, the squad's looking strong. It's, it's, it's looking um, great in depth. So every game moving forward, Paul will want to win. He'll want to win on Tuesday. And hopefully, a little bit of respite in the League One. Um, kind of time gives them an opportunity to bounce back. And we don't want to look, do we, at kind of knee-jerk reactions one match. We want to look at the bigger picture of the last sort of five or six weeks. And Derby started this season playing some good teams, big teams, not quite maybe getting the results they wanted, but they have got themselves on this little run. They have, but it's new human nature to react instantly after um, a result, a performance, a, a you know, a, a disappointment of maybe not picking up three points and, and that's natural and it's understandable. I think Paul and the staff will appreciate that and I think the fans have every right. But again, looking at overview, the last month or so has, has been excellent. We're building in confidence. There's belief within the squad. The squad, it looks stronger and you looked at the bench today and the difference that some of those players could make. 
we instantly look at the game, the, the, the build-up going into it. The only thing that was disappointing from my eyes was how we started the first 45 minutes. If, if you started on a more of a front foot, more kind of taking it to Cheltenham, you win the game. We haven't. We've got a point away from home. We're still unbeaten. You, you, you build from that. Uh, as disappointing as it is, an overview of the last five, six weeks has been excellent. Well, thank you so much for your company over the past couple of months. You'll be delighted to know that Owen Bradley is back, back on Tuesday and back permanently here on Rams TV as well. One of the things we didn't see from our coverage, our cameras at Wadham Road this afternoon, is that the ground is actually overlooked by British Spy Centre, GCHQ. Now, were they watching when Cheltenham Town scored their first league goal of the season and Derby picked up a point? Of course they were. Good night. <laughs>